Hi everyone, welcome to my first Kerbal Space Program video. I'm playing this in career mode, and this is my last mission to collect science from Kerbin. I've completed all the surface missions to the various biomes while flying, landed, and splashed down. I've also done several missions to low orbit and one to high orbit. This one will be to collect data from a space high over the ice caps and tundra, then from space low over the badlands. I'll go over what I'm doing tutorial style as I do it. Oops, what you saw me doing right there was raising up the rearmost landing gear leg. I put one in the center when this was a VTOL plane uh, to help with landing. Um, having a landing gear at each edge of the plane sure makes that much, much safer. Even though I'm really, really good at uh, landing now on a runway, I left that there just to guard against tail strikes, but that means you have to raise it up prior to throttle up, and I forgot. While I'm uh, flying up to altitude here, I wanted to give you a little bit of context. Uh, this video is going to be part of a series on making realistic, sensible, and reusable craft. Prior to version 0.25, I was all about rockets, most of which were fuel efficient, i.e. they had multiple stages, but were expensive, and that all the parts shed from the craft were in no way reusable. Then after flying dozens of contracts, I realized that I did not want to have to earn 250 grand every time I wanted to launch an old school rocket. So I started learning how to build planes. The key ability to planes that makes them so useful to a reusable space program is not their fuel efficiency, which is great, but their ability to do pinpoint landings. This means that for small payloads, utility missions, collecting science from the space around Kerbin, moving astronauts into orbit, or perhaps even refueling a mission, uh, space planes are ideal. The launch cost is only the fuel. So after learning to, learning to design aircraft, I designed and built space planes and finally VTOL aircraft so that I could return science from Kerbin's biomes without losing money to recovering craft in faraway places. After this video is posted, I'll go back and edit and post some footage from my last few VTOL flights. I learned some things that I have not seen in any tutorial that I'd like to share. After that, I'll start doing Minmus and Mun missions using rockets that are not only single stage to orbit, but also return and land around the Space Center. For high altitude flight, you should equip your aircraft with turbojet engines. These are tuned to be more efficient at high altitude than the basic jet engines. So right after takeoff, I turned to north to aim for the pole and brought the nose up to 45 degrees, which is as high as I can go without bleeding off airspeed. In the middle atmosphere, when these engines produ produce the most thrust and the air resistance a lot less, I will take time to level off and accelerate. Alright, now we're leveled off and we're accelerating. I have to gain nearly 1500 meters per second, and I only have about 15 kilometers of air up above me before going into space. So I'm going to keep the prograde vector just above the horizon in a very shallow climb so that most of my thrust is producing acceleration. I will still be climbing, and as I accelerate, one thing to look out for is uh, signs of, of heating underneath the aircraft. If I see that, I'll attempt to pull my nose up a little bit to gain some altitude. There's no sense in wasting energy just cooking the atmosphere. And as I accelerate in level flight, the amount of intake air I have to feed these engines is going to climb, but it will drop off rapidly as I gain altitude. The most important thing here is that you do not flame out one of these engines. That's the most common cause of spinning and uh, at this high altitude, which will rip your plane apart. So I keep my eye very closely on the intake air provided value and I compare that to the intake air needed make sure that uh, I always have enough intake air. As the intake air provided drops I will throttle back to match those values up so that I don't flame out. While flying nearly level this altitude that can happen here as you're pushing the limits of your altitude is that you reach your altitude before you have really reached the speed that you're looking for. And what will happen is you'll start to fall back into the atmosphere. 
Uh, if this happens, don't worry about it. Just watch your intake air and keep increasing your throttle as necessary so that um, you know, you're getting your maximum amount of thrust without flaming out your engines by stressing out your intake air. As you fall back down, keep your nose up slightly above, the, above your prograde vector. At some point, you will start to rise again, and you will carry most of your speed down into the atmosphere, and as you rise back up, it'll give you more acceleration time. And next time you come back up, you'll be going faster than, uh, than you thought you would be. What you saw right there was me remembering that um, these engines have a feature where they will auto-switch into rocket mode when they think the time is right. In my opinion, they usually do it way too early, so what I did there is switch them back to manual mode. At this altitude and speed, I'm still accelerating fairly rapidly, so I'm just going to hold it here for as long as I can. So I'm starting to get pretty close here. Uh, I'm not climbing very much anymore, and I'm not gaining much speed anymore. And as you can see, my throttle is back down, you know, getting close to about 50%. We're just sort of hovering here. If I were to keep going, um, you could easily, with this throttle setting of fuel efficiency, circle the entire planet. Another thing that's important up here to remember is to turn on your RCS. If you do start to lose it, uh, you don't have a lot of aerodynamic control over the craft anymore. You're going to need your RCS. Okay, we're at Mach 5.4, 30 kilometers up, 1,750 meters per second. My intake error is only 1 20th of what it was a little bit earlier on takeoff, and I don't think I can get much more out of this, so it's time to switch the Sabre modes to the rockets. Now, as soon as I do, of course, I'm going to throttle all the way up, and I'm going to raise my nose just slightly to try to get us into a, a slight climb, you know, maybe 5, 10 degrees at, at tops above the horizon. and. We're going for space high, so we're going to burn all the way up to 250 kilometers for the apoapsis. If you were good to go for only 70 kilometers, this burn would only take you know, 10 or 12 seconds, very quick. Okay, now we're just going to coast on up to our apoapsis, which is about 15 minutes away. That's how flat our burn was. Now you got to remember you don't want to open up your bay doors until you are in a vacuum. That happens at 70 kilometers on, uh, on Kerbin. And you definitely, if you have solar panels in there, you definitely don't want to open up solar panels. They'll get torn off even at uh, this altitude. Now I'm going to set up a maneuver node here to circularize. While doing so, I realized that my orbit inclination was not uh, straight up and down at 90 degrees. I really want it to be right at 90 because these, some of these biomes are pretty small, and I want to make sure that all of those biomes rotate underneath.
Okay, now it's just a question of triggering my science experiments at the right moment. If you do not have any mods that help with this, what you can do is just periodically do a crew report and see what biome it is talking about. And while waiting for these biomes, you'll see me alternating between speeding up the time warp to get things moving, to kind of admiring the craft flying over this beautiful landscape, to orientating it in various ways to get the most uh, solar charging going. Okay, now for the Badlands biomes, I need to get down to Space Near, which is below 250 kilometers. So I'm going to do a quick burn here to lower my altitude. And you'll see me orbit several times here trying to make an overflight of the Badlands. The Badlands are easily the hardest biome to overfly because they are its kind of spotty and spread out among mountains and highlands and grasslands and everything else. So you have to be quick about it the moment you see it pop up on your screen. And to make matters worse, I had to get an EVA report over the Badlands too, so that meant actually s triggering the science and then switching crafts over and hoping I was still over the biome when I made the switch. Alright, and with that, my data collection over Kerbin is over. Time to land this thing and then start thinking about how to collect data from Mimmus and Mun.
Now what I want to do here is a shallow re-entry burn. So I need to time my burn on the back side from my landing zone. By now I've watched Kerbin turn underneath me for enough time to be able to guess when the space center will be under my orbit when I'm finishing my re-entry. I also want to land in daylight which narrows my options. Do this right and I'll come right down on target. Do it wrong and I'll have to spend an additional 30 minutes flying to the runway which can be frustrating. To make this all easier I placed a flag just off the west end of the runway before launching that I can target and aim for. Now you'll see here when I finish my re-entry burn that I go and check my uh, predicted landing spot and it's way off and what happened was I didn't shut the engines down quite soon enough. So I have to fine tune this and a great way to do this is uh, to use the RCS jets. I only messed up by about 6 meters per second so using RCS is a great way to fix a, um, a discrepancy that small. So you can see how little delta V uh, it takes to create a huge change in your landing zone. So I flip the plane over and I start RCSing forward and even a little bit off to one side until I place that X right over the Kerbal Space Center. By the way, in case you didn't know, the X is produced by the Trajectories mod. The red line shows my path through the atmosphere and the X is the prediction of where I will actually touch down. Okay, over the next several minutes you're going to see a few things happening here. One is that I go ahead and deploy my air brakes. Uh, this is something that you don't see players doing too much, but if you think about it, you want to slow down fast. Uh, you don't really want to slow down with too much uh, heating going on in the aircraft, or you might start stripping parts. Uh, the other thing is that to slow down you can increase your angle of attack, which drastically increases the drag on the craft. Now, what I did first is I pulled the nose up, but then I looked at my landing prediction and it was of course way off because now I've changed you know, the lift on the, on the airplane. So I kind of nose down a little bit, get it back onto the target, and then I start doing the smart thing which is to pitch or uh, roll 90 degrees and start pulling your nose in steep turns to slow yourself down but not um, change your landing prediction too much. Now this part of the flight is easily as dangerous as when you're still trying to gain speed and climb up through the very, very upper atmosphere. So turning RCS on is a good thing to do here. Also if you have any kind of an indicator that will display how much you're stalling, you can always right click on the wing, but I use a, a helper for this, which is the Ferrum Aerospace uh, window. Minor stalling of course is okay, you're just helping yourself slow down but if you pull the nose away from your prograde vector too far, you'll go into a major stall and at this high speed you'll probably rip your plane apart.
Here's a good tip to get lined up on the runway. You are lined up when you are headed 90 degrees or 270 degrees and you are pointed right at the closest end of the runway. If you placed a flag and have targeted it, what you want to do is put that indicator on your nav ball about halfway in between you and either the 270 or the 90 degree line, whichever is closest. As you continue to fly, you will see the target creep closer towards the line. As the indicator gets close to the line, turn towards as well to keep it about halfway there. That way you won't overshoot. As it so happens, this was one of my worst lineups I have ever done. During a mission before this one, I was only 0.4 degrees off from all the way over the mountains to the west of the KSC. And now you get to see a strange bug. It looks like my flag has moved under the ocean to the east of the runway. Bill probably went scuba diving to play a practical joke or something. Here's a great landing tip for when you're on final approach. Drop your landing gear, open your air brakes up a little bit early, and then maintain your throttle so that you're just above your touchdown speed. This way if you get into trouble and have to go around, you can drop your air brakes and have the effect of an immediate 20% you know, or so increase in thrust without having to wait for the engines to spool up. And by the way, if in the space plane hangar you take your plane and you rotate the nose up a little bit, and then lower the craft down to the ground so that your rear landing gear and your tail touch. This will give you some kind of an idea of how high you can pull your nose before you strike your tail down on the runway. If it looks like your nose is say 10 degrees up, then your prograde vector can be no more than 10 degrees below your nose on landing. Alright, time to wrap this up. Thanks for watching. I'm going to try to be a little less uh, wooden, a little more entertaining next time. And for next time, I'm going to go over VTOLing. I'll be happy to get this space uh, video off my hard drive so I can get back to VTOLing. Uh, do some highlights, some tips and tricks on that. I got pretty good at it, and it's how I collected all of the science data from the various biomes around Kerbin uh, that you have to land on, or even, even land on in the water. When that's done, I'll start to go into reusable rocketry and what I think is a very interesting way to get science off of science off of have a good night and take care